Oh, how to start this video. I don't know. I just know I'm amped to make it. Yeah, I tried. Now, some of you probably think I do not remember this and turn my box on you, but I did not. I was just creating anticipation or being depressed, whatever's cooler. So, without further ado, get ready to look back on one of the most dominant energy drinks of the 2000s, Mountain Dew's Amp. Mountain Dew Amp, usually just referred to as Amp, was PepsiCo's attempt to get into the world of energy drinks. Released in 2001, it was branded as the Amp Energy Drink from Mountain Dew, being one of the first products to try to merge the worlds of energy drinks and soda. It came in only one flavor, which was sort of assumed to be the flavor of Mountain Dew because of the color and branding, but we don't really know as it's just named the original. The drink took off with it becoming the fourth highest selling energy drink by 2008 which is the same year the first rebranding was introduced. Not much was different except that the Mountain Dew logo was moved to the bottom of the can and was slightly smaller. It also took the From Mountain Dew text off the can, leaving it to just read Amp Energy Drink. Only three years later, in 2011, they rebranded again to completely remove the Mountain Dew association and made the can totally Amp branded. This makes sense because at the time, I would have been 10, so I was just starting to experiment with energy drinks as a rebellious boy, and I always remember Amp being its own thing. So when they brought back the Mountain Dew logo in 2018, I was pretty confused for a while. But it's because in the 2010s, energy drinks were at their peak. Sales were amazing, MTV was huge, skateboarding was huge, cars were cool again, and the world of online gaming totally changed forever. And during this trend, the market seemed to start a trend of its own, preferring energy drinks throughout the day instead of soda. Which makes sense, because around this time, the world of soda in general would see a steady decline of sales, simply due to the amount of research that has been done on them and the impacts on our bodies. So, people felt better drinking the same amount of sugar, but with much more caffeine and a hint of tartness. And yes, I'm people too, so don't feel called out. But Pepsi noticed people gravitating towards energy drinks as more of a coffee alternative in the morning instead of just whenever you need energy. Also, it's not hard to notice Monster, Red Bull, and Rockstar's impact on the culture during this time and Amp wanted in. But, like I said in 2018, when the world of energy drinks started to see a steady decline, Amp went back to their Mountain Dew branding and left us with just the original flavor it started with. Well, and cherry, but it didn't sound as cool ending the chapter. So let's talk about some of the flavors Amp had over the years. We already talked about the original a little bit, but did I mention that Amp is also made with real sugar? And not like the white stuff that we get in stores, like real cane sugar, so that's pretty nifty. And in true soda energy fashion, the next flavor they would release was Overdrive, which was a cherry flavored drink. Relaunch was their orange flavored drink. Elevate, which was a mixed berry flavor. Traction, which was also renamed to Boost at one point, was a grape flavored drink. They had a green tea flavored amp, a watermelon flavored amp, Amp Lightning, which was a lemonade based energy drink, and Amp Trading Paint, which was the only limited edition flavor in collaboration with NASCAR. One day, I will gather all these products from one of these looks backs and do a taste test video, I swear. But for now, all we can get in stores are the original and cherry versions. They also sneakily released an Amp Energy Juice in 2010 which came in two flavors, orange and mixed berry. They did not last long however. And in 2010 they released Amp Energy Gum, which is really just meant to be a novelty item. Now let's talk about some of the stuff Amp was involved in. Most notably, Amp Energy was the title sponsor for the inaugural NHL Winter Classic Outdoor Game on New Year's Day 2008. But before that, in 2006, they sponsored Kevin LePage's Peak Fitness Racing Ford for the 2006 Daytona 500. And in 2008, Amp Energy began sponsoring NASCAR Sprint Cup Series driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his number 88 car. PepsiCo was the official sponsor for NASCAR during this time, which led to the Talladega 500 being called the Amp Energy 500 in 2008 and 9, and the Amp Energy Juice 500 in 2010. In October 2010, Amp Energy Juice produced a short film about Talladega Super Speedway called The Legend of Howadega, which starred David Arquette and was directed by Terry Gilliam and included appearances by Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Darrell Waltrip. Around this time, Amp also started their YouTube channel, which is still up to date and has lots of nostalgia porn. They had a podcast dedicated to NASCAR and many videos with all the people they sponsor and commercial outtakes. It's pretty cool actually. Amp also had their own game called Amp Energy Power Dash, which was just a pretty simple mobile game. NASCAR wasn't the only sport they tried to get into, Amp even sponsored its own snowboarding team, and in 2009, Amp Energy joined Burton Snowboards to sponsor the 27th Annual U.S. Opening Snowboarding Championships at Stratton Mountain in Vermont. Shout out Vermont. 
They also were the official sponsor for the World Extreme Cage Fighting in 2010, but the company went defunct the same year. Besides sports, there was one time when AMP had graphic designers, musicians, and artists create custom AMP branded refrigerators which were placed in designer homes and retail stores. Designers that participated in the promotion included Topher Chin, Steve Aoki, Omar Epps, and Han Cholo. The initiative was carried out as part of PepsiCo's bid to recast the image of its AMP energy drink as the beverage choice for the fashion, art, and lifestyle crowd, which clearly did not work. And in 2011, PepsiCo was no longer the official NASCAR sponsor, and I couldn't really find out whatever happened to their snowboarding team. And that's really all they did. After this, they relied strictly on commercials and traditional advertising all the way until 2018 when they eventually rebranded to the Mountain Dew Amp Energy it started as. Looking back, it's hard to deny Amp's impact on the world of energy drinks, but it's also pretty easy to see that it didn't hold up as well as Monster and Red Bull have over the years. But that's not hard to believe, as we saw the same thing happen with Vault. These are soda companies that are trying to make an energy drink, whereas Monster and Red Bull are purely energy drink manufacturers, so they just have the time and effort to make the best product available. Whereas Pepsi and Coke just wanted to capitalize on a trend, as big companies tend to do. At least we can be happy there's still a variation out there today. We also have to give credit to Mountain Dew for creating the first soda forward energy drink, and I've come to master it all these years later with their game fuel line. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any idea for these videos, I'm always up to hear them. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if not, then just thanks for the view. I will see you on the next video. Peace.